name of the departing is from here. So the details of uh, this approach can be found from our paper here, for the outside paper. And although it is the first time our team joins this challenge, actually our team has been involved in development for many years, and we have many papers published in this area. If you are interested in this area, you can check out our webpage. And one of the examiner is this approach, which is here. And before we introduce our approach, we'd like to introduce the process approach, which is the excellent work of RCMN. And from the Im input image, we will use the selective search for, for supporting the bottom boxes. And then the Alex map is used for extracting features, and then the SVN is used for classification. And finally, bottom box regression is used for finding bottom box locations. And our approach has a long pipeline which includes many components that are not existing in the RCM approach. And with these components, we are able to achieve about 40.9 in AP on the validation 2 dataset, which is the same as process split on the validation 1 and validation 2. And our recent result is 45 in AP on the validation 2 dataset. And for the bottom box rejection, the motivation is trying to speed up the feature extraction procedure because it takes a very long time for extracting features from the RCN and then training your SVN. Therefore, we, we try to cascade on RCN in order to make the, the training and validation of new new models much faster than before. And with this cascade, the time required is reduced from the 10 seconds to about just one second. And with the remaining bottom boxes, we are using divide demand for classification. And this is our overall structure. For the top models, it can be any deep model. It can be XNet, it can be Clarify, or Networking Network, or Google Net. We don't care about this one. The model is from here, and our training procedure. So the first part is of is about how to pre-train your model. And we will try to do some investigation on the image classification and object detection task mismatch. And the number of classes and the model used. And we will also investigate the complementary priority property of these models. As for pre-training, RCN actually pre trained on the image classification data, which is image level annotation, and then fine tune on the object detection data, which is object level annotation. However, there is a mismatch between these two data sets. For image classification, for example, for the graph before, you have to deal with the scale and translation of the graph before within the image. However, for object detection, you don't have this problem. So the network trained for these two data sets for these two tasks will be different. <coughs> Therefore, to, in order to bridge this gap, we consider two different schemes. The first one is we insert a, another fine-tuning stash, that is, we fine-tune on object level annotation. Where is this problem? It is from the internet localization data. We use the volume boxes of the 1,000 classes as the data for, for fine-tuning this model. Then how about we just skip the first part on the image level annotation and we just pre-train on object level annotation and we find out it is even better in terms of mean and key. And for the model design, find that clarify performs better than AlexNet. So here is the summary. In terms of number of classes, we find that the more number of classes is pretty better. And in terms of object level annotation, it is actually better than the, uh, than the image level annotation. <coughs> and we find that Clarify performs better than AlexNet. However, our observation is that the mean AP is small. For example, it is about just 1.3 here. However, the per class difference between these models are very different. 
For example, for the scorpion, the difference of their AP can be reaching about 20% in mean AP and reaching about minus 20% for the hamster. Therefore, these two models are complementary with each other. So, is there any way of using it? Further, we will try to use it. And another component in our different identity, a new layer. Which is the depth fully layer. With this depth fully layer, we can increase the mean AP from 36 to 38.5. And as I, what I said in, in the last year, is deep network useful? Yes, sure, it is revolutionary. However, shall we discuss the excellent works of our computer vision researchers? Surely no. We have many good works from the computer vision researchers. We shall use them. So here, what we use is process and the Fazaswalk's approach, that is to handle the deformation. And deformation learning has been a very, very effective approach in computer vision. <coughs> However, it is missing in the deep model. Therefore, we propose that fully layer, which is used for learning the deformation of the visual patterns. Actually, we have a previous work on learning the deformation for pedestrian detection, which is in the last year's ICCB. However, in this challenge, we consider more difficult problems, and there are many more problems. Uh, the first one is that for pedestrian detection, we don't assume repeated patterns. However, for object detection, there are many repeated patterns. For example, for the key in the keyboard, and the light bulb in the traffic lights. And for the pedestrian detection, we just consider one class versus the background. However, in this case, we have many. We have a large number of classes. We should consider the shared pattern of the large number of classes. For example, the circular pattern is shared across many classes. And then we design our depth fully layer with the details provided in the table. And this is the information term that will be learned by the deep model. And here, by adding the deformation constraint with the response map from the convolution of your visual pattern, then you add them together, you will have the added response and you can do some max pooling. Therefore, the, that pooling layer is a kind of max pooling layer that can learn the deformation constraint of your visual pattern. And with this design, the coding layer and the convolutional layers, we, can, we are able to learn the patterns that are shared across different objects. And for the subbox features, we, we will, we, you, you can read it from our paper, I will just give it. And for hinge rolls, from the RCN approach, you have two steps. First, fine tune your deep model. Second step, keep the deep model fixed, and then extract features and <coughs> learn your SVN. In our approach, we replace the softness loss for the model into a hinge loss. Therefore, the two steps are merged into just one step. And in this way, we can save the feature extraction time, which costs us about 60 hours. And for contextual modeling, we use the image classification scores from the, from the clarify as the contextual information can need to improve the mean AP by about 1%. And for model averaging, previous works, we consider model averaging as from random, different random initial points or set different models size. In our approach, we combine 10 models that has different design of network structure, free chaining scheme, bounding box rejection scheme, and objective of the nets. We also try to investigate the, to choose different sets of models for different object classes. And if we find even that better results. So our baseline is from RCAN. And from that, we find that each component of the pipeline is effective. And here's a sum, summary of the mean AP improvement caused by each of the com components. And we find out at least about 1% in terms of mean AP. And we find that the pre-training scheme and the pooling layer is very effective. 
And here is the summary of the results. So, the, in summary, the bind box rejection is helpful in chaining new models and, and in saving your time in extracting features. And the pre training scheme on object level annotation with more classes is very effective in improving the accuracy. And the depth pooling layer is able to improve the accuracy by about 2.5 mAP. And the in draws is able to further save the time required for extracting features because one of my colleagues is crazy about extracting features. And for model averaging, we not only consider about using different parameters tuned from, from different random styles, we also consider different model designs and training schemes. And I'd like to advertise for another poster, which is a novel pre-training scheme, a, a novel training scheme for the model, which is the multi-stage training scheme for the model. <coughs> I'd, I'd like to advertise it again, and thank you. Uh, we just train it for the fine tuning stage. Okay, so, 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 so. 